Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vibrations and waves. The topic of this video is wavelength, frequency, and speed. And we want to know what is the mathematical relationship between wavelength, frequency, and speed, and how can we use that relationship. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. To create a wave and a rope, I'd have to grab the rope and begin vibrating it up and down. Let's focus on the first cycle of up and down motion in the creation of that wave. I would grab the rope at its rest position and then begin to move it upwards towards a crest position. That would take one-fourth of a cycle in order to go from rest up to crest. Once there, I would start downwards towards the trough position and at a halfway through the cycle, I would have passed the rest position. Three-fourths of the way through the cycle, I would have reached the trough and created the trough of the wave. Now to complete the cycle, I would head back up towards rest. The time to do this would be one period. And in a time of one period, the wave that I started to create at zero seconds would have moved away from my hand a distance equivalent to one wavelength. So if distance and time are one wavelength and one period, then I can say that the speed of this wave I'm creating is simply the wavelength, lambda, divided by the period, t. Now the period and frequencies are reciprocals of one another. So I could say t is 1 over f, and I could take this 1 over f expression and substitute it into the denominator for the period. The equation would turn into speed equal wavelength, lambda, divided by 1 over frequency. I could clean it up a bit by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by f, turning the equation into speed equal f times lambda. Now in physics, whether you're doing mechanics or electricity or wave mechanics, there are always big equations that are used repeatedly. And this is the big equation. Speed equal frequency times wavelength in words. And in symbols, V for speed equal F times lambda. Physics formulas can become algebraic recipes for solving for unknown quantities in physics word problems. And obviously, V equal F lambda can be used to solve for speed and solve problems such as this one in which ocean waves are reported to have reached the shore 15 times every minute. They have a wavelength of 12 meters and we want to know what is the speed. So to do so, I multiply F times lambda. The F comes from the information 15 times every minute. That's equivalent to 15 15 divided by 60 seconds, or 15 divided by 60 hertz. Multiply by the 12 meter wavelengths gives you the value of 3.0 meters per second. But V equal F lambda can also be used to solve for frequency. It would have to be rearranged by dividing each side of the equation by the, the wavelength. The equation becomes F equal V divided by wavelength, perfect for solving problems such as waves in a vibrating guitar string have a wavelength of 1.05 meters, that they travel at 420 meters per second. What is their frequency? To do so, I have to take the V of 420 meters per second and divide by the lambda of 1.05 meters and I get 400 hertz. But once more, the V equal F lambda equation can be used to solve for wavelength. I would have to rearrange it to get wavelength by itself by dividing both sides of the equation by frequency. Lambda or wavelength equal V divided by frequency. Perfect for solving problems like sound waves travel at 345 meters per second. What is the wavelength of the waves produced by the the vibrations of a 256 hertz tuning fork. I need to take the speed of 345 meters per second, divide it by the frequency of 256 hertz, and I get 1.35 meters for my wavelength. Some students are doing a wave experiment using three different slinkies. They shake it at different frequencies, they measure the wavelength, and now they have to calculate the speed. We'll do those calculations, but as we do, we want to answer the question, what does the data tell us? So in the first two rows, I'm going to go V equal F lambda for the data given. And when I do, I get the values of 3.5 meters per second for the speed. It's the same value in row one and row two. You'll notice that the frequency changed dramatically. So did the wavelength, but the speed stayed the same. It stayed the same maybe because the medium was kept constant. Maybe speed depends upon the medium. Let's look at row three and four where the medium all of a sudden changes from a zinc coiled sl slinky to a copper coiled slinky. When we do our speed calculation, we get a different value. 
2.5 meters per second for the speed. Interestingly, when we change the medium from zinc to copper, we change the speed. Now we notice row 4, the speed's the same as row 3, despite the fact the frequency was different. The wavelength was also different, but the speed stayed constant. We'll repeat the process in row 5 and 6, calculating a speed of 4.0 meters per second when the slinky changes from a to a 3-inch diameter coil zinc slinky. We get a different speed. Now, if we ask, what does this data tell us? What's really jumping out at me is, first of all, that while you calculate the speed of a wave by going V equal F times lambda, the speed of the wave doesn't actually depend upon what the F and lambda value are. It depends on what the medium is. It's the medium that determines what the speed value will be, not the values of F and lambda. So we have to say wave speed depends upon the properties of the medium. The second thing we notice is that a change in frequency does not change the speed. It only serves to change the wavelength in the inverse direction. That is, if you look in row 1 and 2, I notice that the frequency doubled, but the wavelength halved, and the speed stayed the same because the medium was the same. We could, that leads us to the conclusion that the frequency and the wavelength are inversely proportional. A matter of fact, I'd like to assert that the factor by which you change the frequency is the inverse of the factor by which you change the wavelength. Here's what I mean. Focus on rows 1 and 2. Look in the frequency column. The frequency changed from 2.2 to 4.4. The factor by which the frequency is changed is 2. It was doubled times 2. It's equal, that 2 is equal to the inverse of the factor by which the wavelength was changed. So the wavelength changed by the inverse of 2, that is by 1 half. It was 1 half of what its original value was. 0.8 in row 2 is 1 half of, point of 1.6 in row 1. We can do the same analysis for rows 3 and 4. We notice that the frequency was doubled, but the wavelength was halved because these two quantities are inversely proportional. The, the, the factor by which the frequency is changed is the inverse of the factor by which the wavelength is changed. We just saw in the previous data table that the factor by which the frequency is changed is the inverse of the factor by which the wavelength is changed. In other words, for two waves in the same medium, we noticed that doubling the frequency would cause the wavelength to be halved. We could think of the equation V equal F lambda when applied to waves in the same medium. The V is the constant in the equation, and the F and the lambda are the variables that change, and they change inversely to one another. To illustrate, let's suppose Suppose that we had a wave whose frequency was 2 hertz and whose wavelength was 8 meters. Using the equation, the speed of such a wave would be 16 meters per second. But if we doubled the frequency to 4 hertz, the wavelength would half from 8 to 4 meters, and we can now calculate a new speed as 4 times 4, and it comes out to be 16 meters per second, illustrating that the V is the constant. It's 16 meters per second. In both of these cases, the wavelength got halved when the frequency got doubled. Another illustration is more pictorial in nature. Here's a wave A who's with a, uh, a visual look of its wave pattern. If we double the frequency to produce wave B, we would notice that the length of the repeating pattern in the, in the diagram halves, and we would get something that looks like this. Let's solve this relatively difficult wave equation problem. We have two boats, A and B, anchored in the harbor, a horizontal distance of 18 meters apart. Incoming water waves force them to oscillate up and down, making one complete cycle every 10 seconds. When boat A is at its high point, boat B is at its low point, but in between them, there is a crest. We want to determine the wavelength, frequency, and speed. Problems like this are best approached with a diagram showing boat A at its high point, boat B at its low point, and a crest that is in between them. Now the distance between boat A and boat B is 18 meters, and if I start at boat A and trace over to boat B, I notice it's one and a half wavelengths. So this 18 meters is equal to 1.5 lambda. If I divide both sides by 1.5, I get a wavelength of 12 meters. Now let's deal with frequency. I'm going to focus on this clause, one complete cycle every 10 seconds. One cycle divided by 10 seconds is frequency information. If I go 1 divided by 10, I get a frequency of 0 0.100 hertz. Now that I know frequency and I know wavelength, I can calculate speed with V equal F times lambda. That's V equal 0.1 times 12. I end up getting a speed of 1.2 meters per second. 
It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources you'll find on our website. I've left links to each of them in the description section of this video. You have a calculator pad, a concept builder, and a Minds on Physics mission. Great chances to apply what you've learned. And finally, a tutorial page, which makes for a great review when you need one. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H. Thank you for watching.